Welcome back to the Wednesday Night War NXT versus AEW Dynamite from August of, I want to say 12th, 2020. Yo, we got crazy show. So we got uh, Karrion Cross sending a message to Keith Lee. But we also uh -huh. got Orange Cassidy taking on La Champion, the, de the demo guy, Chris Jericho for that $7,000 jacket uh, uh, uh price tag yeah. so yeah. who won the Wednesday night war this week uh we go back and forth and there, there was there was something that really shocked me that I can't believe it but I'm gonna let you know that when, when I get to it so uh, uh, alright <laughs> okay I, get to it. I, I, I think you know what it is but I'm, I'm gonna uh, hold on of course on. I do but we'll get to it <laughs> so uh we start off NXT with uh, Karrion Cross taking on Danny Burch. Danny Burch was the one one of the people he beat up uh, in the hallway last week go talk about, go talking to Keith Lee. So, um, Danny Burch, just like Orny Lorcan, takes it to Karrion Cross. And uh, Weird. You said weird? Yes. Why was it weird? Because Danny, Danny Burch is good. He just... Danny Burch is good, but you mean to tell me somebody who can just squash Tommaso Ciampa and then Danny Burch is too much for him? Yeah, well, like I said, it, it 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 was it was very uneven because it's like he was just like reading all Karrion Cross's moves and slipping out of everything, but then um, he uh, uh, he fought, but then Karrion Cross does put him in that in, in that in the cross jacket. I was like, I don't know if I like that name, and I don't know if I like that move. We got because I'm like, first of all, how many people in WWE? Have we seen do the sleep the sleeper hole? And they got different names for us. Like we had the Caribou the Clutch for Shayna Baszler. We have the uh, Coquita Clutch for Samoa Joe. We got the we got the uh, uh, the cross jacket for Karrion Cross, and we had we, we had the uh, Taz mission for Taz. Even at least Taz uh -huh. put put your arm into it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And I'm just like we y'all talking about diving through the ropes. We got like seven uh, variations of the sleeper hole. I'm like it's a sleeper hole. You know what I'm saying? It's not nothing really big. But after the matchup, uh, Keith Lee comes out, and they outside the ring, and Scarlett comes down, and they, they want the title match at TakeOver 30. So uh, Keith Lee signs the contract, and then he, then Charlotte, uh, Scarlett signs, uh, 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 he, she gives it to Karrion Cross. He signs the contract. They close it, and then she slides it back in there. I don't know if Keith Lee wanted to get verification of that he signed it, even though he saw him on the ramp doing it. He <laughs> opens up the book, and we get a fireball into the face of Keith Lee. First of all, the way he sold, like, they kept putting that gift up on, on a, the WWE's YouTube channel. It was hilarious. He's like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it was funny. I don't, has it ever been a good, I only know there's been only one good fireball spot ever in wrestling. I think it's only been one good one. I thought, I thought this was pretty good. But what, which one I are you mean, talking about? It, it, which are you talking about? Are you talking about China? No, I mean, for one, this one was okay. Like, yeah, but this one was okay. Like, it was kind of far, but I guess he got he had to be for safety. The worst one I can make was Hogan and Warrior. Oh, uh, I think by far. God, that was by far the worst one. We'll put up. <laughs> but uh, the one I really liked was uh was James Storm and Jeff Hardy. That was cool. But hold on. The one... The, uh, when I was young, the the Kane and China one made was believable to me. Remember okay, when? Okay. Uh, because this back when they used to shoot the fireball. And remember, yeah. remember, remember when he shot and Triple H duck and it hit China right in the face. Yeah. And he yeah, was like, "Damn, yeah. what the fuck was that?" And then you know he he, he shot the cannon out also. But they, 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 Triple H just as going to shooting the cannon was kind of cool too. But I think and that's just because I like the way that he did it. He like blew into it, and Jeff Hardy like exploded. Yeah, kind of. But yeah, now that that one was cool too. Yeah, but but uh, yeah, but uh, it, it, it 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 wasn't that bad though. But kind of the firewall came out, it uh, kind of stunned Keith Lee's eyes, and he was going around, and then it was like, oh wow, it was something different that we have not seen on a um on on WTV before. So uh, that was cool. Drake Maverick takes on Killian Dane for what the fuck reason? <laughs> and then I was like, this is a mission, so, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What was you about to say? So, I'm listening. I was just going to say, just, Killian Dane is how, how big, and, and, you know, Drake is how big? Like, this match just don't even make sense. I mean, it, it, it taught it all. 
<clears throat> so, but for it's some like reason, Spike Dudley versus Big Show match. Exactly, but for some reasons, Drake Maverick's getting some offense in and drops yeah. the elbow on Kelly Damon. He's getting hyped up, but then the Undisputed Era comes out and just says, "Screw this matchup." They take out Drake Maverick. They take out Kill. Take out Kelly Damon. Uh, Adam Cole gives the last shot to the back of Killian Dave and gets on the microphone and he says, you know, I am the longest reigning NXT champion and you know what, Pat McAfee, I challenge you to come down that ramp and face me and confront him next week because you're stepping in the ring with that guy. So, very uh, passionate promo by Adam Cole, which he's good at doing anyway. He's just, you know, small. Like, and I hate that WWE is trying to hike up his height and I'm like, don't. For, for first of all, but they, but they make him taller anyway. Yeah, but here's the thing: they they, they say Adam Cole six foot, right? Can, yes, they say he's six foot. Yeah. He's not six foot. Look, for, I was about to say, look, when y'all, if y'all look in the opening of my Raw and SmackDown reviews, I took a picture with Adam Cole. I'm six foot. I am clearly towering Adam Cole. And I'm just like, you're probably like five, what five nine, five ten? Who me? No, Adam Cole. Oh no! When I see him, Adam Cole's like about five ten, maybe mm-hmm. it may it may five nine because I'm six foot. And when I took a picture, you can see I'm kind of leaning down, and I'm still taller than he is. Mm-hmm. And as every time y'all see my Raw SmackDown openings, if y'all get curious, so I'm just like, if y'all keep bringing attention attention to his height, he's never going to get past the Vince McMahon body test. Mm-hmm. This is not going to work. Uh. Cruiserweight champion Santos Escobar takes on Tyler Breeze. Not a title matchup here. Uh, we don't know where Fandango's at, but you know, then... Just, just real quick. Just real quick. Mm-hmm. When Tyler Breeze came back to NXT, I thought we'd be getting Tyler Breeze from 2015. With the, no, we get The one that was actually like contending for stuff and was doing good. No. Now we're just getting Jobber Breeze. Yeah, we still... Well, he's in the tag team, though. So... So... Once again, yeah, I, I mean, like, I, I have been even less interested in Tyler Breeze now than I was when he was on the main roster and back in like, 18 the first time. Oh, my God. They don't even build him up no more. Like, you, when he used to hit the beauty shot or the uh, supermodel kick, yeah. he used to, like, call it out. Now they just say super kick. Oh, what a move. It, uh, yeah. it, it, he, Tyler Breeze has fallen so hard. It's, it's he should grow the hair back and grow the ponytail with a little curl in the front of that, and then he'll be good. Yeah, he he need to go. He needs to go back to that character. That, that's what made Tyler Breeze awesome. But now he's not that anymore. And speaking of and that, they uh, turn him into an idiot too. Uh, uh, Dougal El Fantasma comes out and uh, start uh, uh, distracting uh, Tyler Breeze. But then Fandango comes out with uh, I thought it was a candlestick, but it looks like a pool stick. And um, it, it's a distraction causes uh, Tyler Breeze to get caught up into the Phantom Driver. And then they, uh, 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 he wins the matchup, and then the, he starts beating down Fandango. Then Swerve come out. Isaiah Swerve Scott comes out. Who is you the? Know, huh? You know that makes no sense, but I guess we're going with it, right? No, no. Actually, the Swerve thing does make sense. Because he wants to fight Escobar. No, he's the only one who ever beat him. Yeah, but well. For him to come out, I thought it still didn't make any sense. Because, but I guess that's just because no, 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 remember when they did that little, uh, uh do doing the whole life of Isaiah Swerve Scott. He talked mm-hmm. about you know, he he he's confident and stuff like that. And then he wants to get their championship, and he says the the guy I hold a victory over is uh, uh, Santos Escobar because nobody else has ever beat him. But I don't know who holds a victory over him, which means I should be next in line for a shot. So he said that weeks ago. So ever since I'm then... Just, I was just saying, like... I was just saying, in this context, why does he care that they're beating him up? That's what I was just saying. Oh, you know, I'm just saying... He, 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 well, he just called there for, for Santos, so... Yeah. That, that's, that's probably why. So I, 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 never, I never understood things like that. I mean, well, like I said, it, it's more so... I'm coming out for him opposed to them. So, I mean, I, I get it that way. Uh... We, uh, the Timothy Thatcher School of, uh, that cat. Uh, was it, I hate these kid? segments. Uh, <laughs> you don't like them? No. Uh, the, the T- Timothy Thatcher's there, you know, showing the properly how to do an uh, ankle lock. I mean, I didn't mind him. At first. Like, I, I don't mind. I like when he, he does the lock and then the, the, the student be screaming in pain and he just be sitting there looking off at this is like, like, I'm bringing pain to you type, type thing like that. But, uh, 
I mean, like I said, for this was a teach teacher how to do angle. Like, it was nothing special. It didn't even last that long at all. So, me and him taking on Indy Hartwell because uh, uh, me and him is pissed because of what happened to her, her man Keith Lee earlier. And uh, so, she uh, beats Indy, Indy Hartwell and uh, makes her tap out before she goes back to... Uh, I like that Indy is getting more uh, screen time. Screen time, yeah. She could be a candidate for the Robert Stone brand. You never know. Yeah, she's uh she's been I think she's been assigned for over a year now, but like she's just now like getting reps, I guess you could say. So I like I like that. Okay. Hopefully they won't mess up they won't mess up any like they did Deanna Parasa. Yeah, oh that. my yeah, and uh, that's your girl. Well you, you know what's back, right? Uh, you know what's back. <laughs> <laughs> We're back home with the Gorganos. Mm-hmm. So, this, uh, what is the thing with him and this Michael Hayes picture? With the, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, I kind of actually missed the Michael Hayes picture. So, yeah, it, was, it was like by the front kind. Oh, okay. They're, they're both in their tracksuits, and then uh, did, uh, Candace Ray was reading to her dog about the fairies and everything. Did and they do the turn, and then once again she talks about you know saying not all the fa- uh, not all the witches are bad. And uh, she, was, she was talking about that. Uh, who who messed up? Was it Dakota or something like that? Needs to mind her own business. So then John Gano pulls out this ladder, sets up in living room, goes to the top, and then he 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 says, finally, he, he goes to his evil mode and talks about how uh, Commissioner Regal finally gave him the match one on one with uh, who's the guy that you don't like? From Cameron Grimes. No, 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 no. NXT UK. Oh, Ridge Holland. Ridge Holland. So he has that matchup one on one, like it should have been in the first place, because you can't have uh, you can't have a takeover, takeover thirty without Johnny takeover, which he does have a point there. Then he goes back to yeah, being but Ridge Holland. Yeah, well, that means he should win that matchup. But we'll we'll, we'll get to in, in the reason why in the first place. So then, after that, he comes down from taking off, uh, turn out, uh, fixing the light, and goes to bed with his wife. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Why would you fix the light to turn it on and then turn it off to go to bed with your wife and leave a ladder in the middle of the floor? Maybe that's just me looking too deep into it. But once again... Well, I, I mean, I don't think that Bill Gargano is the smartest guy, so I don't know. Look, I don't mind the, the whole Gorganos thing. I really don't. But the my, I always say the issue, their evil segments last too long. It needs to be like a yeah, snap. Right, yeah. Huh? I say, yeah, it, it just don't... It just seemed like they're running like a, a funny, not funny sitcom to me. Exactly, and it needs to be to the point where one of the uh, the the other person, the couple, Candice LeRae or Giant Gargano, doesn't know what's going on. It's kind of like they almost did that, like when she was talking, and he's like, "What are you reading over there?" And she's like, "Oh, oh, it, see, that's how it should be. It should be like they go into a snap, into a confusion, and go into this angry mode. It doesn't last, and the other one should be confused by what they're doing. I think that that would be a more interesting type of dynamic than yeah. But they they are the Gargano, so I guess they put them together. I don't. These segments just don't work for me. They never really work for me. But now they're just really not working for well, like me. And said, they're going too long. Yeah, and like I said, they're going too long. And like I said, I, I, I had it in the beginning. Bronson Reed is taking on Damian Priest. Both these men are in the uh, North American Championship ladder match along with, well, it, it was it, I was supposed to be Dexter Lewis, but he got hurt. And um, so. Ricochet, point two. Yeah. Point zero. <laughs> yeah, because uh, he, he, he drew 1.5. Yeah, like that. So, um. Uh, Good matchup by these two. I was like, I don't know who they're going to give it to. But first, I was like, they're going to give it to Bronson Reed because they are really trying to build this guy up. So, uh, yeah. I like that. Uh, uh, Priest goes for the reckoning, but uh, he gets a jackknife cover from Bronson Reed, and it was a surprise win. So, I like that Damian Priest wasn't like, you know, defeated, defeated. He just got he got, he got, he got the razor pin, obviously. He was shocked uh-huh. afterwards. So, uh, that was cool. We have... Uh, the Robert Stone brand that's out getting ready for a tag team matchup with Casey Casazero and Caden Carter, mm-hmm. who have who have turned out to be a decent team up uh, up until now. So I, I, I thought they team, was, I think their name is like Team Ninja or something. Oh okay, so 
you know, uh, Robert Stone talked about so the Robert Stone brand is El Fuego. For those who don't know, say that would mean that means on fire. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I like I like the red suit and everything. And he says, but you know what, Casey? Oh, speaking of red, you know what? What? Didn't Aaliyah have on red, right? Aaliyah did have on red. All right. Yeah. <laughs> all he said, well, all right. It's so Mercedes Martinez. He's all right. Nah. Yeah. nah. So, um, yeah, I had to ruin it there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, he says, he tried, he tried to get Kiss Cat Zero over. He says, but the thing about Robert Stone Brand is you need to come come over and drop the losers and talk about Kate and Carter. And then, so, uh, they take that too lightly. So, uh, Casey, was, was it Casey or Kate that stopped on his, uh, his ankle that, that was ran over by the tank? Hey, he, I think that was Casey. Yeah. It was hilarious. So, then we get on with the tag team matchup. Uh, obviously, Aaliyah's get get done around, it jotted around a little bit. But Mercedes Martinez comes in there, cuts all that noise, gives uh Casey Casanzaro her uh what's she call her finishing move? The air raid no, it was it, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was the air raid crash, I believe it is. Um, yeah, I don't know what she calls it. Yeah, but it, the actual name of the movie is the air raid crash. So uh, the Rhea Ripley comes out, and for some reason, Rhea Ripley has a problem that every time she's about to come out on somebody, she got to do her whole entrance first hey, before yep, she yep. she does this all the time. I don't get it. Oh, <coughs> that's right. What she, so, she just told you that she ain't worried. I ain't worried about you. She came out there and did the whole stomp and everything. So she comes out there to, to start uh, face off with Mercedes Martinez, with the numbers game come up, and then Shazi Blackheart comes out and takes down Aaliyah and gives an insecurity to Mercedes Martinez as they roll out the ring. It may I I thought it was going to probably be Rhea Ripley versus Mercedes Martinez at Takeover, but it may be a tag team match. Yeah, it might be. How do you feel about blonde hair Rhea? I don't mind blonde hair Rhea. I did like other the other Rhea Ripley better, but I I don't know. I like the first blonde hair Rhea better. To me, I think that's the best Rhea. Not the best Rhea, like as far as performance, but like when she had the long, long blonde hair and it was like straight out. It's like the Royal Rumble 2019 Rhea Ripley. If you if you if y'all go okay. back and watch that, y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I said I'm, I'm trying to get used to. It. I, I know she probably doing so Visca notice her. <laughs> because you like, you know, it's like, like I said, bro. Yeah, so she's gonna turn her head to the same color as Charlotte. Main event time, which was confusing as shit. Triple threat Ooh. matchup. Your boy Ooh. Cameron Grimes uh. versus Koshida versus uh. the returning Velveteen Dream. With a blonde beard. With with the with the bleach blonde beard. And whoever wins gets a spot in the North American title match and actually take over. So, I was mad already when the, when he came out. I was so mad because I knew who was gonna win. Yeah, it, you you already knew. So I, uh, the matchup was actually uh, pretty good. It was great seeing Dream back. Maybe um, <laughs> we'll get okay. I'm right now. People know that who listen to this review know, probably want to know our feelings about the Velveteen Dream situation. If you want to know. How we're going to feel about Velveteen Dream? We will talk about that in detail on the no on this podcast, obviously, because this this is going to be released earlier than the other parts of the podcast. But l- listen to the podcast, the Velveteen Dream section, and we're going to talk about it. Okay, we can agree on that, right, part time? Yeah, yeah. Because I I got shit to say. But I was like, okay, so uh, Velveteen uh, Kashida has a Velveteen Dream in this arm lock, and then so Cameron OJ's Grimes. Situation, I guess. What you say? So I said OJ situation, I guess. <laughs> don't, don't start, don't start, don't start, don't start. Uh, Cameron Grimes uh, goes and hits the cave in on uh, Koshida. And then, I like how they did it, though. Yeah, he, he had him in the arm lock. He had him in like a, yeah, and he had him like kind of suspended like a, uh, I don't know who do that move, but he had you suspended like that, somebody threw the leg drop. Yeah, oh, God, I, I, know. Know. I, I didn't know talk about and Cameron yeah. Grimes rolls out a uh, Velveteen Dream and then picks up the win. So Cameron Grimes is going to the ladder match. Unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> so if Dexter, if Dexter Lumos was not injured, Cameron Grimes would not be in this match. No, definitely not. But, uh, but anyways. Yeah, but uh, so. it's not done, though, because Dream is pissed off. He comes back in there and starts beating up a, a, a Koshida. But then. <laughs> so he's a heel. <laughs> yeah, uh-oh, oh, oh, yeah. Might as well be. Might as well play it up, right? So then, here comes uh, 
the Finn Balor, Finn Balor, Balor comes Balor. out and it points him down. So we're about to have a top match of Velveteen Dream versus Finn Balor next week. So, so, so how did they already have that schedule? Like, bro, literally the match was just over. And it was like next week Velveteen and Balor to see who gets the final spot. Like, the match just ended. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So, I, 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 Gorgano and Balor better win the match to get in. I think people ain't lose this shit, though, T Dream with. But you know what? We're, we're not on that right now. We're, we're about to go over to AE. Nah, I think, look. Yeah. I just, I think he's going to take, like, it's going to be like, L, 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 L,
I'm actually excited about this match now. Mm, yeah, okay. I, I, I think I already know who's going to win, but, you know, like... I, I think Moxley retains. Yes, Moxley's going to retain. Yeah. Man, they, Hardy, got, they got, like, 10 years to get a belt to MJ up whenever they want. Exactly. So, yeah. Matt Hardy was interviewed backstage by Alex Marvez, and then he said he, he's not clear to wrestle. Why does he still work there? I don't know, but he's not clear to All wrestle right. for another couple of days, and then, especially with, after the Chamber Guevara launched that chair, gave him that crazy 450 off the stage and then he says but um he he was you know all he got is Sammy in the mind so he's pissed so then there was somebody walking this is it look like Sammy he's like Sammy and he just walks up behind this guy takes it by the neck and starts slamming this man head into like the uh this uh loading dock door and then and we, that is and definitely then, not a Matt Hardy thing to do it's man. not <laughs> and he was looking he's like oh that's not Sammy the guy was just looking like oh, what happened yeah, so, <laughs> so uh, it it wasn't saying why they tried to attack. Then we uh, it's time for the TNT Championship with the now completed TNT Championship. Before we get into the match, how I like the belt, the completed belt. I actually like the belt. I I really like. I'm glad that it's finished. They got more details on the only thing. The only thing that I don't like, which is probably a small nitpick, I don't like that the TNT blings out like it does. Like, I wish it was like, I wish the TNT was like a world and then the TNT like, and the, the design of the world. Okay, I understand. So just like a, a plain, yeah, just a plain silver plate with TNT on it. I wish they could have did something different with that. But anything other than that, I like it. It, it, it looks, it looks pretty cool finished down with the gold it lettering. Looks, it looks uh, royal and regal to me. Yeah. So, like, you know, with the gold lettering and stuff like that, so he's going to bring in Scorpio Sky. And then uh, we have the Nightmare Family outside, Arn Anderson, Brandy Rose. Well, okay, okay, okay. Uh, this man brought out like 50 people. <laughs> That's the and, and, and I didn't even see, all I saw, I saw a picture of his interest. I didn't even get to see the people, people, people this week. All I saw was, I saw QT Marshall, Ali, Brandy, Arn Anderson, and somebody else carrying a flag. Dustin, we like, had yeah, Dustin, Dustin Rose and Arn. Brandy. Yeah, does he really need that many people? That's the Nightmare Family. <laughs> I don't. I, that's something I don't understand. That's but a, all right. Um, Scorpio Sky is giving it to, to give it to Cody here. And oh, by a, the way, uh huh. Referee for this match, senior official Mike Kiota. Mike Kiota made it over to AEW. He, he, he got his elbow pad and everything. So it's great to see mm-hmm. Mike Kiota have his oh, uh, get a job. We wait, <laughs> we waiting on you, Charles. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, Charles yeah. Robinson. Charles Robinson. <laughs> He, he, we wait till he sprint down a, a whole level stage to the ring. Wouldn't that be so if like Mike Key on somebody get get uh get knocked out the hair calls Charles Robinson sprint? <laughs> Yo, if the Charles he, he got to start from like all the way on the other side of the football uh, arena, like and, like uh, Hangman. Yeah, and then this and then he got he got to sprint a hundred yards. He got to oh, sprint man. that, and I'm like, yo, I, I, want him, I want him to run like a ten six. On on, oh. on, a, on a hundred yards and slide to the ring because you can't slide to the ring on a level stage. But um, yeah, he did that. He they recently redid it. I forgot when. I think it was like Undertaker and Shane, maybe Undertaker, Shane and uh, Roman and Drew. I think, mm. but I don't know. I just know they they did it like recently, like as far as like 2018, 19. But, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, Scorpio Sky hits Cody with a uh, springboard cutter on the outside ramp. And Cody stuck. Cody kicks out to, um, he, uh, Scorpio Sky tries to go for a super uh, a suplex, but you know his back is hurting. But uh, he's trying to go for uh the TKO finisher, but then Cody hits him with a car- the crossroads. I'm like, well, here it goes over, and Scorpio Sky kicks out. So now yeah, we got. Cody doesn't, Cody doesn't lose to. Uh, I mean, uh, people don't lose to just a, a crossroads. No, they gotta. He gotta put him in a figure four and pin him first. Yeah. <sighs> You gotta leave Sean Spears alone, bro. Um, oh, just real quick though, like this is why I don't like Cody matches. Like their his matches are good, just like he's Cody Rhodes, one of the best people in the company. And these past couple weeks, he's been going toe to toe with with uh, Sunny Kiss, who they haven't really built up, or all the other people they haven't really built up. Now with Scorpio Sky, it's built up, and he's doing a good match. He, he just it just looks like a regular match because Cody does this every week. He does, well, see, the thing is, Cole, this is the whole John Cena U.S. Open Challenge thing anyway. I know, but, and, like, 
when John Cena was fighting people, they would get most of the offense, and then he would beat them with one finisher. Now, they they kick out of crossroads, like, the first two times, sometimes. Yeah, well, some people do do it, actually. Like, some yeah, people... kids kicked out of, like, two. <sighs> yeah. Tch. And no, no, you're actually right about that. So it, it 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 gets it gets very repetitive, which that's what some things Jim Cornette was talking about when it comes to AEW wrestling. And um, Scorpio Sky has to go for another cutter, but this time he missed, and then he hits he hits him with another crossroads, and then he he's now done. So everybody, so, go- so did you catch this replay? Because I caught it when it first happened. Uh, Mike Kyoto counted to four. Damn sure did. Okay, that, that's you said. Yeah, he damn sure that was like, bro, you, you just you might as well put the extra five count on there. Might as well, or it, it could be one of these. Like he running his his hand hit the mat. They, they thought it was no, one. no. He clearly one, two, three, four. I, I don't know. Uh, yeah. yeah, he ain't been refereeing in a couple months. So I guess. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he a little rough. I got, 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 got not the rust off. It was it was it was, a good, it was a good match. Cody's about to show him respect. But then speaking of respect, Brody Lee comes out. With Alex uh, with, on the screen has Alex Reynolds and the other guy, um, John Silver. John Silver, yeah, next to him, and then he was just like he has the, the, the other TNT championship. Yeah, the the original one, the old one, the one about the light, and says Saturday, August twenty second, because since the NBA is back in playoff mode, they can't do it on Wednesday. So next next week's Wednesday Night War is going to be a little bit different because it's coming up on Saturday. Uh, I think it'll be a big event because it's like Saturday night prime time. I think it'll be a big, a big that'll be, episode. That'll be kind of dope. Uh, he said, you're going to put some respect on my name. I take your, that, that beautiful piece of gold out of your hands, Cody. Tick <laughs> you can take this trash. Yeah, you can take this. Time's up. So, great promo by Brody Lee. That's why I said the Dark Order didn't suck tonight. They still suck yeah, overall. Because they used the main members. That's why. They didn't use all 30 members. That's why. You're you right. They used the whole Wu-Tang Clan. Uh, yeah. tag team champions Kenny Omega and Hangman Page take on Jurassic Express. Uh, tag team championship matchup, good matchup by these two as well. Uh, Kenny Omega starts hit, hitting the uh Snapdragon suplex on uh the Luchasaurus, and then uh, but Marco says I just uh that Luchasaurus gets out of it, does the whole uh, oh God, what's it? What's it that they do? They do in the Indies when you know you give them a German suplex and they just stand up and start screaming and shit. Oh, uh, fighting spirit. Fighting spirit, yeah. And then uh, takes Kenny Omega outside the ring. Marcus is all celebrating. Kenny Omega like, oh really, little son bitch. And then he gave yeah, him. That's, a, a, yeah, that's exactly what I'd be. I'd, and, oh really? You gonna celebrate and go just knock him out? Yeah, he gave him. A, he gave him a stab dragon suplex on the outside. Jungle Boy goes for a dive on the outside, misses, and then uh, Kenny Omega gives him a snap dragon suplex on the outside as well. He comes in. Uh, Kenny Omega and uh. Adam Page is about to go for you get choked there by Luchasaurus after after a miss buck shot, but then they try to go for a suplex, but then Luchasaurus it gives him a double suplex, which this is why I need to see more of that that power that comes from from, from the Luchasaurus. Then he takes Marco to t- toss him outside onto Kenny Omega. I'm just like I hate that he keep doing that in my, my personal opinion, but um uh Page power bombs uh. A, a juggle boy and then they come back and they, they finish him off with a last call uh the buckshot larry v trick combo and th- th- there it is so um good great matchup by these uh by these two teams so, yeah, so it, was a, it was a solid match you can't forget of this tag team appreciation night it so, is tag team appreciation oh because oh, oh, we about to get into that after we see santana ortiz uh destroy the, the luggage of the best friends backstage we apologize oh. what we did to your miles fan what are you tripping <laughs> So, um, we get the Young Bucks and FTR in the ring with the Hall of Famers and Legends, the Rock and Roll Specs, Ricky Bobby, and Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard for Tag Team Appreciation Night. First of all, I'm like, damn, they didn't, you know, have no effort in trying to decorate or nothing. So, th- this was basically fathers talking about how good their sons were. So, uh, basically, uh, put them lips surgically attached on the backside. Basically. Yeah, yep, that's what it was. When you had uh, the Rock and Roll Express talking about that the Young Bucks were the greatest tag team uh, in in wrestling today. But then Arn Anderson says, well, you know, uh, I have to agree with you there, but I'm going to say something that's going to ruffle little feathers. And uh, I want to say that 
the FTR is the greatest tag team. Then this, this felt like a uh, rush hour. He like, my daddy can beat your daddy. And he said, my daddy saved uh, fifty people from burning crack house. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so my daddy won't caught a bullet with his bare hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then he uh, tell no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. While I'm watching this, I'm like, really? Yeah. And like, Tully got the mic and said. This is stupid. I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, he, you know, he's just like, um, he said, uh, the reason yeah, why Tom, play, Tom Brace so. is the greatest football player, quarterback ever because he has championships, and none of these teams out here got no gold around their waist to talk about yeah, how the best they the are. Best. <laughs> I was like, yeah, tell me. And he said, he turned around and he said, because uh, it's not the Bucks, it's not FTR. Then he turns to uh, Arn Anderson and points to just like the American Nightmare he's like and I don't understand this and then Arn Anderson said well I'm a grown ass man and uh, it is the last time that I had to explain anything to anybody Sean Spears makes his way out to the ring because he did not need to be there and uh, well, you know he is totally wet like guys so. yeah oh, I, I know I, I, I... I knew I seen a subtlety, so I understood what it was doing. Yeah. So as soon as Sean Spears came out, I already knew. I already knew what was about to happen, and I was waiting on it. Yeah. So Arnold said, "I see what's about to go on here." So bam, drops the mic and walks out, and then uh, did it? Uh, he totally totally slapped uh Ricky Morton out there. Yeah. Uh, yeah no, no, Ricky Morton punched him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and he punched him, and then he all stumbles back, like, uh oh, and then there's a little brawl, but it looks like so, uh, <laughs> Dax Neat, huh? So, so yeah, uh, you can explain, but like, as soon as they got to a scuffle, and uh, he, uh, Dax is the first one down, oh, I already knew, because, like, he's down, he's uh, taking off the knee pad. As soon as he took it off, I'm like, oh, he is about to just, he's about to whack him in the back, but, you know. He is. Uh, and yeah. the who's left in the ring? Rock, uh, Rock, Rock Express. Express, and then I was like, "These guys are going to take these bumps." And what happened? They hit him, and they, they, they hit uh Ricky in the back, and then they take Bobby. Hey, they hit him. He fell over the rope on the on the <laughs> on the ramp, and then they take Bobby, and they put they gave him a spike power driver. Oh man! I'm would like, you rather would you would you rather him take a spike power driver or the shatter machine? <laughs> I. I, I I don't know anymore, man. These hey, moves. If they gonna, if they gonna go heels, the shabby should be way worse for somebody that's sixty-two ex- years ex- old. Exactly, I, and I would laugh my ass on like cave in his chest. <laughs> but he was selling like like Dev though. I don't think I really wish they would have did better. It's it's a harder shot, even if they probably couldn't. A yeah. harder shot to the back with the uh, with the the knee thing. Yeah, so much for tag team. Appreci- yeah, so much for tag team appreciation, man. Uh, well, I mean, subtleties. I'm pretty sure they might do something like a. I don't, I don't know why I feel like it's gonna be like Sean, uh, Sean Spears, FTR, and Hangman. I don't know why. I just feel like that's something that happened. Mm-hmm. Hikaru so, Shida versus Heather Monroe is up next. Oh wait, wait a minute. Before we get to this, are you aware that they have a women's tag team uh, tournament going? Yes, and I have not watched too much of it since Cameron you, got eliminated. If you didn't watch this show. Would you know that? I wouldn't have known that. See, they don't even, they're not even promoting it. No. Like, they don't even care. They still don't really care about the women's division. Yeah. Even from this match. But, like, uh, I know, like, the Nightmare, still, the Nightmare people are in the finals, and I think... Uh, they're in the finals? No, what? semifinals, my bad. Oh, I'm about to say... They're going to make it to the final because there's not no other teams. It's like Big Swole and Little Swole, whoever Little Swole is. L- little like, Swole. <laughs> no, we can't do it's this like shit, man. Tynara Conti, Anna J, and uh, Dima, Di- 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 Diamante, and Ivelisse. Out of, those are kind of four teams. You know what? I I think we, we should probably talk about it you, you, later on. But um, uh, Sheeta wins uh, she, she, before, with a submission. To Monroe, it wasn't really that much of a good match. This, this match, the only women's match, and this match was like two minutes. Yeah, I was like, "Where's your women's division at?" For real, Jake Roberts is backstage telling hey, the audience. They just don't use them. Uh, yeah, they were right, and then because we had, we, we had to make time for this Jake Roberts promo about instilling what fear means, and I'm just like, now, 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 
to be to be honest, it was this guy's fault. This guy literally, first of all, they're doing an the interview. He gonna walk past Lance Archer and bump into him. That's his fault. Yep. Man. Put yeah. trash can got destroyed. He destroyed everybody in that room, and you know, Jake has the 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 slow menacing promos, and he was like, "Did you tell him yet?" He's like, "No." Nah. This part seemed weird to me. Yeah. Kind of like just takes his shirt off and like. Yep, and then he uh, tur- yeah. and he told him to turn around, and he has on there everybody dies. <laughs> and the whole time Jake's like, "No, no, but come on, man, no, man, come on." It's like uh, it's kind of weird. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm starting to fall off the land charge train. It's time for the main event, the $7,000 obligation match, Jericho versus Cassidy 3, as they call it. With with, uh, with Mike Kyoto as the ref, because Jericho wanted Kyoto to do the right thing and call it right down the middle, wink, wink. Yep. Uh, this is a good back and forth matchup. I actually found this matchup to be uh, quite entertaining until the end. And I'm going to say why that is, because, uh... The best friends. Yeah, God, I, why they don't even need to be here? Did it, uh, since he's about to try to run down, the best friend come down, try to, try to stop them on the entrance ramp, and the ref turn and make sure it was going to interfere. Then, uh, Orange Cassidy starts to, um, hit these, like, uh, dragon screws, but Jericho's landing on his back. And I was like, is he supposed to do that? Is that, that, that That's the same thing he he did when he was fighting um, uh, Tanahashi. He did give him a dragon screw, and he wouldn't take it right. I don't know if his, if his knees are just bad to not take a dragon screw. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. Either. I'm like, he's just taking it bad. It, it, the commentary is trying to play it up as this is what he was attending on doing. Uh, but um, Jericho... Uh, Hits uh uh what what was it was it Hager uh hits down and, and, and hits Orange Cassidy but then he kicks out and then uh he tries to go for he gets right back up and, and does roll up yeah I, I I don't get that that's type of stuff uh he hits with the forearm Jericho Mr. the juice effects and then Orange Cassidy rolls him up in what they call a a mouse trap pin and I don't think Jericho took it right because it it didn't look that hard to kick out of it so but. Yeah, but Jericho's not nimble to do all these these you know nimble moves anymore. I understand. Yeah, I understand. You, you got to think of a better finish because that's mm-hmm. the, the match was great. But I was like, but it, towards the end with the whole dragon screws and the stuff like that, it didn't take too much away from the matchup and the whole mouse trap pin. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that that pin's supposed to be looking more devastating. But Jericho is like he getting pinned regularly. He, he didn't even jump up afterwards. So, but Orange Cassie beats Chris Jericho. And uh, it's a big win for him. So, with that being said, how do you feel about... So, uh, who wins the Wednesday Night War? NXT or AEW Dynamite? I would say AEW. I have to agree with you, too, because at any time that AEW is going to give me a night of good Dark Order stuff, which I still don't like the Dark Order period, but it was a great night for them. I'm going to get the show pass. The tag team championships uh, between uh, the the Jurassic Express and Kenny Omega and Adam Page was really good. Scorpio Sky and Cody was a good match also. Great pro uh-huh. by Brody Lee. So, yeah, all that stuff was really good. Once again, I, li- I like the Keith Lee fireball stuff. Cameron Grimes is like, okay, he going to the, the North American Championship ladder match. There's so much controversy surviving Velveteen Dream. There's not even no point in really talking about because everybody wants to hear you know the actual thoughts about it. It's just a mess. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So um, post any comments down below. What you guys thought of the Wednesday Night War? Who won for you, NXT or AEW? And now we're gonna continue on with the rest of the podcast.